going on, Jerome? Beautiful Thursday. Birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. And we got the we we got the Anthony Edwards uh, pro line mock up jerseys. Uh, they're, they're fantastic. So shout out to them. Um, this is the Denver one, the Denver swap. Should have a Dallas one, but. Uh, but a uh, big shout out to Proline. They're fantastic. And uh, I-, I know because a bunch of uh, Jerome's uh, also got some jerseys and they're high quality. It's just like, I love them. Plus, so I, I wore the I-, I wore the Phoenix one, the, the Phoenix swap one to the Como Zoo w- with my kids. And I got stopped like five times. Be like, dude, whoa. O- only stoners watch basketball, I guess. Anyways, but uh, yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, love Casey and the guys over there. They're great. Uh, also great is, so I, I know that the media is chomping onto this and just running with it because they just love to create drama. It's like, oh, Malik Neighbors, uh, the Vikings tried to trade from him. Uh, McCarthy Turner, if they don't sign after Sunday, by Sunday or after Sunday, uh, th- then start to worry. But until then, I will not worry. Because frankly, they have no leverage. Like, what, what are you going to do? You you know, poison the well with yourself and the fan base by by holding out of training camp as a rookie. Nah, 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 nah. Now, I fully understand it's rumored that McCarthy, haven't really heard much of Turner, but rumor that McCarthy wants to sign a bonus up front, which is fine. You can want things. That's not how the Vikings operate, right? Uh, And not even Justin Jefferson got his full signing bonus up front. And yes, Caleb Williams got his up front, but the Bears are stupid. And the Bears had nothing they could do. But also, he was number one pick. You were the number 10 pick. You will have a better career, but that ain't going to fly right now. That's all, man. That's all. Uh, speaking of flying right now, so Daniil Hunter is certainly flying right now. Back at home in Houston, he got paid respect. And I, I want Daniil Hunter to do well, except for when the Vikings play the Texans week three. That's all. Also, I, I want Diggs to do poorly. I want C.J. Stroud to do poorly. I want C.J. Stroud to do so bad that they bench him for Case Keenum. And then Buffalo right seven heaven every single play. It's like it's Madden, man. But uh, so first off, this does not look correct. Now, I understand he doesn't wear 99 because of J.J. Eh, respect there. But 55 doesn't look right, man. Mm. Mm. I, I, I don't like it at all. I, I think he wore 46 in college. No, I, I just made that. He wore 94. Who wore 46? I, I know that Brian Robinson wore like 36 at Texas. Forget B-Rob was in that famous uh, national title game at the Rose Bowl, uh, Texas versus USC. Made some big-time plays in that game. Uh, but long story longer, so Daniil Hunter. I don't know, man. Like, I, I want to like the Texans jerseys, and I, I know that everyone doesn't like change, but – I think they're pretty good. I mean, they, they look a little bit uh, you know, XFL-y, but I feel like paired with the with the Texans helmet, like it's not bad. Like it's not terrible. Hmm. Uh, speaking of uh, not terrible, so the Justin Friggin' Jefferson negotiations, like we, I feel like Vikings fans, like we don't appreciate how smoothly that negotiation went because both sides knew that they needed each other. There was a lot of respect there, and Jefferson got got his bag. And but there was, uh, yeah, there was fits and starts where things were slow and blah blah blah. But there wasn't any drama. Like there wasn't Jefferson taking down all the pictures on his Instagram. Uh, there wasn't uh, oh, anonymous sources from inside the Vikings said that Je- Justin Jefferson is being greedy. No, there wasn't anything like that. There was no trade demands. There was no credible trade rumors. Uh, basically, it was just some media fluff, uh, and that was it. And it got done. And again, the largest non-quarterback contract in NFL history, just like, ah, smooth, smooth like butter, man. But, uh, yeah, the whole Brandon Ayuk uh, San Francisco situation is going on. Now, yeah, San Francisco drafted a bunch of receivers, but Ricky Persall's uh, on the pup list, and also none of them are Brandon Ayuk. And they don't have a deep threat receiver if they get rid of Brandon. And because Debo's a running back. <laughs> I will die on this hill. Yeah, but again, we got we got to thank our lucky stars that we're living here today where Justin Jefferson is a wide receiver one, and they can't take that away. That's right. Uh, some of them that also can't take away is the UFL. Now, I want to believe in spring football. Uh, I think that it's great uh, for some of these uh, fringe NFL roster guys to get an opportunity uh, to play and get some game experience as well as coaches too. I 
So we said this before. I want the NFL to become a true minor league of the NFL or the G League of the NFL. Uh, but long story longer, the UFL had their draft on just a random Wednesday morning. There's no fanfare, but six Vikings got taken. Now, here, here's what happened. So the UFL, any player that wasn't drafted, so undrafted players, even if they're on 90-man roosters, uh, they can be selected by the UFL for the rights, right? Uh, and six players uh, from the Vikings got drafted. This is from Vikes Man Page. Uh, Gabe Murphy, Dwight McLaughlin, uh, Bo Richter, hey, Bo Richter, uh, Taki Tommy, uh, Dallas Gant, as well as Spencer Rowland, uh, the offensive lineman from UNC. So uh, ba- basically, uh, the UFL is calling dibs. Now, it's sort, it's sort of like a backhanded thing. The UFL is saying, like, hey, we think that you're talented, but also we don't think that you're going to be on a 90-man roster come spring. <laughs> but also, so a, a lot of players do have choices where some of them were offered futures contracts uh, you know, back uh, in, in January uh, or February, uh, but they decided to play in the UFL because they want to showcase their skills. And I, I respect that, where uh, basically you can just be on a 90-man roster and then hopefully get a chance in practice, talk about practice, at OTAs, uh, training camp, whatever. Or you could play in spring ball, and you can actually have some game tape and game experience. And you've seen a bunch of UFL guys uh, get onto 90-man roosters heading into training camp now, so it's good. But recapping the first round, uh, so Jason Bede, the pride of Kansas. Let's go. Let's go, man. Lots of quarterbacks on here. Uh, okay, uh, Reese Plumley from UCF. He's 97,000 years old. Uh, Julian Pearl from Illinois is a tackle I kind of liked. Same thing with Frank Crum cr- coming out of Wyoming. I, again, I'm shocked that Frank Crum wasn't drafted. Physical freak. Gabe Hall, uh, I actually think it'd be a little something, something. Loved him in the draft process. Second round, two Vikings went. Uh, Dwight McLaughlin to the Michigan Panthers. Nailed it. Uh, and then Gabriel Murphy. Uh, I'm surprised Gabe Murphy wasn't higher. Although, you know, this is balancing out if if uh, the UFL thinks that they're going to be on a roster. I think Gabriel Murphy has a very good chance to be on the Vikings 53-man roster going forward. Uh, let's see what else here. Oh, Blake Watson for Memphis. Joystick. Uh, Kedon Slovis. Hey, remember when Kedon Slovis was at USC and he was supposed to be the cat's ass? He was supposed to be the next chosen one? Eh. Maybe not so much, yeah. but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, a couple of these guys, McLaughlin, Murphy, uh, you know, Bo Richter, I, I think could be in the mix uh, for the Vikings either on the 53 or potentially on the practice squad, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, also, something we're seeing is Adam Thielen you know, putting together these off-season workouts. Also, our guy, Weiss Visuals, who I think watches the show. I think he's a drone. Yeah. Uh, but he's been doing some great uh, workout videos, and there's been a lot of grind but a lot of uh, of current Vikings, a lot of former Vikings getting together, putting in that work. Uh, Jalen Speedy Naylor out there, please stay healthy. <laughs> also, CJ Ham. Uh, so, I'll always be wary of the guy who works out in full sweats uh, when, when it's hot out. Also, the, the guy full sweats at the gym. Uh, that's you're gonna end up like looking like Mr. Universe uh, underneath, like like Jay Cutler, not the quarterback from Vanderbilt, but Jay Cutler, the bodybuilder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but also, in so we talked about this before, but it straight from the department of no one cares except for me. <laughs> so Thielen has always been an Adidas guy, but in these off-season videos, he's been wearing Nike, Ni- Nike cleats, Nike gloves. Also, so the the Jordan ones. Uh, in, in Panthers colors. Ooh, come on. Let's go. It's fantastic, man. Also, uh, so JC Hassenauer uh, has also been at some of these workouts. Now, this is not me with, with, with a blocking pad. It's not. Hair's too long. <laughs> uh, but but JC is interesting because he is from Woodbury. And instead of going, you know, the gopher route or staying in the Midwest, he walked on at Alabama. And eventually became a scholarship player, uh, became a, uh, a high-end, uh, versatile backup uh, for the Tide, uh, and then uh, embarked on an NFL career, uh, had a three-year stint in Pittsburgh. Last year, he was with the Giants, and he's only 28. He does have center and guard experience, so I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Like, he's local. He practices here. Uh, uh, he, he seems to be tight with, like, Thielen and CJ Hamm and stuff, so let's go. Hey. We have the meats. We need to be back, man. That's right. Speaking of meats, so, oh, it, it, the rest of this video has nothing to do with football. So if you want to tune out, it's fine. I'm not going to take offense. But so this is how my brain works. So talking about JC Hassenauer, 
made me think of a line from the Mighty Ducks where Jans, the the shape, uh, the skate sharpening dude, yeah, and also like Gordon Bombay's you know, mentor slash father figure, he surprises. Well, no, he surprises Gordon and Charlie with some hasid pfeffer and eggs. Right now, as a kid. You know, I'm watching this at like five, six, five, six, seven years old. Like, I have no idea. Like, oh, Haas and Pfeffer. Ah, but they don't seem too excited about it. Blah, 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 blah. But then I, I looked it up because Haas and Pfeffer is a German rabbit stew. Now, what's interesting is that um, some people know it's like I grew up like country. You know what I mean? Like I, I grew up in, well, I was a town kid from a town of like 1500. So uh, de- definitely still country ass country. Right. And. I hunted a lot as a kid. Uh, I never shot a rabbit, but we actually ate like a decent amount of rabbit because I did have a German grandma and we did have Hassenpfeffer, except she didn't call it Hassenpfeffer. That's where the disconnect is because, uh, again, as a kid, I was like, I didn't know what Hassenpfeffer was because, first off, that's not it. But mm. uh, but also, my, my grandma, she was very, she was trying very hard to Americanize things. So she just called it rabbit stew as opposed to hasa pepper. I think it was a move by her parents back in the day. Uh, because they're, they're, they're German immigrants. And during the time that like my grandma was growing up, was not great for Germans. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but what am I talking about? Oh, so the, the German rabbit stew. And this applies to squirrel too. I did a lot of squirrel hunting as a kid. Just in the woods with the 22 fantastic but so rabbit and squirrel are very 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 lean meats right they're not a lot of fat on them uh based on their diet based on their activity based on a lot of things right and there's actually like a like a historical trope is like you can starve by eating rabbit because there's just no there's just no fat right and what you need to do is so the stew like you got to slow cook it what my grandma would always do is you know get a big old pot with like you know the onions and garlic and all all that stuff and then sear the rabbit or or the squirrel either one works and then you can use can of cream of mushroom soup uh my grandma would actually make like her own like bechamel so uh, mushrooms cream a little bit of flour a little bit of butter all all that stuff all, all together and then braise the crap out of it all right and as, as you go, and also you can add, add add fat to it. So you can add, yeah, you can add bacon fat to it. Although that adds just like an uh, like a different like flavor profile. But uh, if you got beef tallow, beef tallow is fantastic for this application because it, it adds good flavor, but also just adds fat. And you know some of that permeates into the meat, also tenderizes it, also all that stuff. So at the end of the day, you get a great like mushroom gravy slash jus, and then. You get some great tender meat that, even though it's lean, uh, the addition of all that fat uh, it makes it a little bit more substantial. You know what I mean? It's fantastic. So that's what I got about talking about J.C. Hassenauer. Hassen pfeffer and eggs. That's it. Uh, lastly, uh, so Jonathan Tamayo, uh, driver's seat 88, uh, won the, the, the largest main event ever, World Series of Poker, $10,000. Freeze out main event champion. Now, uh, Tamayo g- got crap because he folded uh, queens to a single raise uh, on the final table bubble, but this is what, like, ICM, man. I- ICM, but here- here's the thing, like, first off, it's nice that Asians finally win something gambling. <laughs> so, not gonna lie, um, so I have, a, I-, I-, I have a standing bet with my- one of my buddies. When the main event gets down to 100 people, uh, I take the Asians, he takes the field. It's worked out for me a couple times, but uh, so Tamayo, Tamayo's interesting because I've actually played cards with, with Tamayo, uh, Turning Stone, like way back in the day. Uh, I forget if it was fifteen thirty or twenty forty. Limit Limit Hold'em, of course, you know Limit Hold'em's pr- uh, prevalent here in the great state of Minnesota. But I don't know it's like awesome. It's like, hey, me and Jonathan Tamayo from Turning Stone, we, we have we, we have one main event between us. That's all. That's all, man. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Vikings new. Well, not really Vikings at the end, but that's what you expect. Uh, beautiful Thursday, you guys know what to do. Skull production value.